Patrol Command Override, standing by for instruction. Rioting reported at the intersection of Knight Avenue and Bishop Northwest. New orders received. Terminate with extreme prejudice. Hello everyone, Wylock here. Thank you for joining me. This is the smaller of two classes of security bots in my cyberpunk setting, the XP-90, XP for Extreme Prejudice, which is how it deals with insurgents. It is an anything goes, house clearing kind of scratch bash, so I filmed myself making it. Here's how I did it. Nothing was off limits, all bins of junk brought down, laid out on the table, and scoured through for any possible treasure. Also, my leftover Warhammer 40k bits. A veritable cornucopia of possibilities there as well. Including this leftover Imperial Knight sprue with some unused weapons. I like this thing. It looks good. I'm gonna chop that out and assemble it. And here's a Space Marine jetpack. This could pass for a thermal exhaust on an enormous weapon. Oh, and these, these came with an eBay rescue lot. They were tossed in extra. I think I could scrape the skull off of one of them, clean it up and use it as an arm. Now, clearly my inspiration here, if not outright theft, is of ED-209 from Robocop, but also the security bots from my third favorite video game of all time, Deus Ex, but mostly Robocop. I thought for weeks about how to approximate the bulb on the top of its chassis, and eventually came to this, the common plastic easter egg. Specifically the kind that split lengthwise, which honestly I don't remember as a kid, I think these are newer, but whatever. Found it buried in the closet with the easter stuff. And this here looks like the remnants of a toy, I got this at the thrift store, I don't know, a couple years ago. Looks kind of like it might be a transformer from the design language. Anyway, I'm thinking that could be good for the overall body, the chassis of the robot, the, the bulk of it. That's the hardest part, I think. Coping saw. This is a very cheap tool, about 10 bucks, available at any hardware store, and probably also at like Walmarts or whatever your big box in your region might be. Invaluable tool, cuts through plastic like butter. Uh, and now these Final Faction Blister Packs. These are kind of all the rage right now. They're available at the Dollar Tree in the States. They are a dollar a pack. They come with all this great greeble, so I snatched up all the ones I could, because look, these are perfect for the toes. Yes, just cut off that peg, and man, that, that's exactly what I need. Awesome. Question is, should I do four toes or three toes? So I laid them out here and just sort of saw how big it would be compared to the overall robot. And they're gonna stick out beyond the weapons if I do that. So I went with a three toe arrangement, brought in the width a little bit. It's gonna look more proportional overall in the end result. Here's some cereal box cardstock. I'm gonna clean up one edge and I'll be using the shiny side for this, nice and smooth. It is a crude material, but if you know how to use it, you can get away with it. For the main meat of the legs, for the structure in the legs, I need those to be very rigid, very strong. I decided to glue in some of these tiny dice that I've I bought and have never used. So I super glued a series of them together using, it looks like the case bottom as a jig to make sure they're perfectly straight. And I put all the five sides facing up. I'll show you why in just a moment. Here we go, I've got a rectangle of cereal box cut. The shiny side is out, the brown paper side is down and I can visually line it up so that it splits those middle pips of the five side exactly in half. Having four of them, it's easy to draw a line and ensure that this thing is straight. From there, I just put super glue on each edge as I rolled it over with a good bit of force, and that will give me rounded corners on the outside. That They're not sharp, they're nice and rounded, they follow the dice, and it's a smooth finish because it's that product side out. Excellent. To cover up the seam, I need some greeble, and I just use cable ties for that. I also made sure to have the one side facing out, because that pip is in the middle of the die, and it's basically a, a preset 
uh, pilot hole for a drill. I knew I would have to do some sort of drilling in this, so that was just to set myself up for success later. Let's look at my random small bits bin at what's in this drawer. I've got these little, like, tiny clear disco balls. I don't know what they are and I don't remember where I found them, but they'll work for an ankle ball joint for this. Drilling through the end dice in a few graduated steps. So I can glue this piece in. And now it's ready to mount to the foot. Now the question was, should I center it so that there's a middle toe in the front or a middle toe in the back? Uh, because I think most of the weight would be over the front, I went with two toes in the front. Also, I can use the back toes, like, angled part there. This is easier to just look at than me talk about. But I could have two points of contact, very strong joint, and it helps me set a consistent angle with the other leg. All right, I needed a break from the legs, so let's get the top carapace going. Black spray primer. Outside to do that, and we'll let it dry. And with this flamethrower weapon, I... Mm, I think I would like for it to be a little bit longer, so I busted off that jetpack piece and put on these other two cylindrical pieces that I found. They had some hoses built onto them. Oh, perfect. Yes. I like it. Now the egg is done, I'm going to hit it with some clear coat. This isn't necessary because I'm about to hit it with gloss, but just for extra protection because that egg is very shiny, smooth plastic. I'm taking no chances. And then I've got some Vallejo gloss varnish here into the airbrush and I hit that with a few coats. It'll shine it up quite nicely. While that's drying, back to my 40K bits collection, I found these in my leftover Eldar parts. I think it would make a perfect shin guard to cover the, the ankle joint. However, as I said earlier, I decided on two toes forward so I broke off the leg, and as a testament to my decision making, it, it was difficult to do. This would have been very sturdy. Glued it back on with a middle toe forward. That way, the shin guard goes on. It's nice and symmetric. It fits nicely. It looks good. This will work. These are plastic drink stirring sticks like you would find at the party supply store. You could use wooden dowels, uh, which I think I did here, to get some different sizes. Just different size pistons for the leg pneumatics, if you will. I glued two of those together and then a, a bigger one, which is the plastic, to it. And then I needed something for the hips, which, you know, these things I put on the weapon earlier, they're, they're going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and bust those off the weapon. We'll come back to that again later. So after gluing those pneumatics into the hip, then sawing it down to the desired length with a coping saw, and drilling to prepare for the, I guess I'll call it the waist bar. As well as this plastic spool piece from my junk collection. Putting that all together, I get the waist assembly. Those square mounting points are just graphics medium chipboard. You could use plastic card or, uh, I don't know, even nothing at all. Then the moment of truth was upon me. I dry fitted to get the right angle, because that was very important to me for the aesthetics. I was a little tipsy at this point, and I don't know where it's going to end up when it's done, so just to be safe, I took a glass bead and glued it up in the front of the cockpit, in front of the toes. And hoses, had some leftover hose bits. Let's chuck those on there. Feeling good. It's time for primer. Best paint on earth, Rust-Oleum 2X Flat Gray. We'll spray that and give it eight seconds to dry. And remember that our sponsor is Heroes Horde for you 3D printers out there. Excellent selection, including all True Tiles lines. It's dry. Now we'll airbrush. Into the airbrush with a light gray. This is Vallejo Wolf Gray. Nice smooth coat. I cannot imagine ever trying to paint white with a conventional brush. Airbrush, essential for it. Then all of the undercarriage, the metallic bits, most of the weaponry, all of that got painted with a gunmetal. After that, standard formula, nice dark wash. I went with a black wash instead of a brown wash because I don't really want grunge. I just want depth and contrast and detail to pop out. This is in a futuristic city, and I generally am looking for a clean aesthetic. More Star Trek, less Star Wars, if you will. 
Then I mixed up a medium gray with some matte medium, 50-50 or so, and did some recess shading wherever there's surfaces that meet, like this. On the legs, a quick tape off and then some black to put on some stripes. And then freehanding the model name with red paint on white. Terrifying, but I got it done. It's a, it looks okay. Also some edge highlighting with a pure white. And incidentally, this is like common knowledge in the miniature painting realm, but this is advice that it took me years to accept and internalize. To paint a model white, paint it light gray and highlight it with true white. Never paint it true white. A finishing touch here, I've got some inks. We're gonna do a heat bloom on that flamethrower. Real simple, into the airbrush, light tint of yellow, then red, and then blue. I used to do this a lot. When I was doing my Ultramarines army, I had a lot of weapons I did with this with. They looked great. Uh, this one didn't look quite as good, and I'm just remembering now, as I'm recording this narration, it's because I didn't use yellow, I used bronze. It was bronze, then red, then blue. Oh well, it looks okay. Time to assemble. Weapons attached with super glue. Canopy fits into those little recesses in the front of the carriage perfectly. The XP-90 is an all-purpose bipedal security robot suitable for guarding, patrolling, and even ground-based warfare. Its primary use is for crowd control, equipped with a massive chain gun that can be fired at variable speed, and an enormous flamethrower that can be tuned in real time, trading range for spread. When necessary, it can and will terminate with extreme prejudice, hence the model name. Where rioting exists, an XP-90 will likely be deployed. Unlike its larger cousin, the XP-120, the XP-90 is not built for speed. Its plodding pace almost assuredly means that anyone who sees, hears, or feels it coming down the street will have time to flee, which is exactly the point. For as unforgiving as the streets of Rook City can be, a river of blood doesn't do anybody any good, and those up high know this. That also contributes to its unnerving appearance, meant to deter. The glossy black dome atop is almost alien looking in nature. In actuality, this thick polymolecular one-way glass bubble houses hundreds of sensors, allowing it a 360 degree understanding of its surroundings at all times. Thanks so much for watching, and if the idea of making miniature stuff for your tabletop gaming is new to you, you should know there are thousands of us. Come to Facebook, the Tabletop Crafters Guild. Nearly 40,000 members at the time of this video. Until next time, I'm Wylock. Make things, play games.